Well, I got a chance to, to read the book last night and uh, I have to say it's a, it's a funny book as well as been a very interesting book. Do you think it reflects your personality a bit more? I hope so and I, I think there is, it is a little bit upbeat. Obviously with the, getting a leak on Monday didn't help because people were picking up a few snippets and looking at the disagreements I had with people. But yeah, I'm happy with the book. I enjoyed working with Roddy and I think he's done a brilliant job, yeah. Obviously because of the leak, um, there's been huge publicity and as you say, the headlines were the usual cartoon yeah. Roy Keane, Roy rants, Roy fumes, Roy rages. Do you get sick of that portrayal of you? Yeah, I think so. But of course, uh, uh, listen, if you look over the years with, with the sending offs and I suppose the disagreements I had with people, it's, you know, it's, I'm, I suppose I'm not surprised with it. Obviously, it can be people being very lazy, lazy, a lot of lazy journalists out there, you know, um, and, and they're like easy headlines. Um, but that's... That, that's part of the game, you know. It's just just one big game, isn't it? Do you think you you were settling old scores with this book? Um, uh, maybe, maybe. I, I I didn't. That wasn't my intention. You have to look at ask Roddy for that. What about Sir Alex Ferguson? Because when his book came out, you were you were quite critical of him. Yeah, yeah. But only in the sense that obviously I had my disagreement when I left the club, but then obviously you, you try and move on. But w when he starts bringing up stuff about myself and and maybe other ex-teammates and, and being critical of us I found it I just found it, uh, you know crazy that a manager who's had success with the players including myself and other lads who've earned him millions of pounds lots of trophies uh, statues after him and you know and all of a sudden he's sitting back and everyone says you know we have to accept it well, why? why why should we accept somebody talking nonsense like that. You say a lot of people have left United on, on bad terms, not just yourself yeah, perhaps, plenty. but Beckham, Yapstam. And Nisselroy, mm -hmm. plenty of them. I think if you privately ask Brian Robson and Steve Bruce, I think I'd be interested to see what they have to say, the way they left. So maybe, it can't all be the players, you know, it can't all be the players leaving on bad terms, or it can't be always their fault. So maybe Ferguson should have a look at himself as well. People talk about his man management. Not so sure about that. The leaving of Manchester United was a kind of a deja vu, was you, your word, Saipan Mark yeah, too. Look, I, I know that when I get in these disagreements, or certainly when I'm backed into a corner, I, I'm obviously going to suffer, I'm going to lose my job over it. But You did say that, um, on reflection, Saipan, ultimately you, you, you lost that one, and yet, well, I, I have to say to you, the inside cover of the book says that your incident with Mick McCarthy resulted in your walkout from the 20, 2002 World Cup. Now. I was there, I know a lot of people vigorously defended you because Mick McCarthy said that he sent you home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is it? No, I, I said to Mick in the, in the argument that, um, let me get my facts right here, that, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't respect him. And he said, well, if, if, you, if you don't respect me, how can you play for me? And I said, yeah, all right, well, I won't play for you. So that, that was it. No, and you listen, I'm, yeah, no, no, nobody sends me anywhere. Again, even, even now people talk about Mick McCarthy or Alex Ferguson, you know, yeah. Whatever career you're in, or professional life, you, know, you answer to no man. 43 years of age, with five children, do you think I have to you know, bite up, bow down to these people? But no, no, I, I regret the incidents, of course I did. I didn't go off to the World Cup hoping it was going to kick off between everybody. And I didn't go to United that day thinking, oh, listen, you know, let's, let's have a big disagreement and, and I'll leave the club. That wasn't my intention when I'm going to Walker and I'm going to Saipan, let me tell you. But things get thrown at you and you, you have to react. Mick McCarthy questioned me about injuries and all this. I'm saying I faked an injury. How oh, dare he? You know what I mean? Who, who are these people? Why should I listen to that nonsense? Why should I listen to Ferguson? Everyone's frightened to death of these people because they think they have power over you, control. Nonsense. You're back with Ireland now and, and your connection with Martin O'Neill. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary, really, that you have Brian Clough in common, uh, Nottingham Forest, uh, Aston Villa, Celtic, Sunderland, and now the Republic of Ireland. And American football. And <laughs> Our kids' names. No, that is. Well, that's the way. The, the way things have panned out would have been brilliant for me, in a sense. You know, for uh, keeps him from a selfish point of view, getting been out of the game for two and a bit years, which probably done me no harm. You said though that assistant manager ultimately it might frustrate you. How long can you keep doing that with Ireland or with Aston Villa? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I think I'm enjoying it. Again, it's a dangerous to look too far ahead, but I think ultimately I do, I do see myself getting back and obviously in, in, into the hot seat because part of me does miss that. You know, making them. Crunch decisions, whether it be undecided about a player who's going to play, the tactics, the travelling, days off. You know, obviously, I'd like to think Martin and, and Paul at Villa are taking my opinions on board, but I know deep down there that they're making the final decision and they get more money. 